Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Uh, a few days ago, one of the viewers here asked me about the potential for doing a review of a uh, campfire flicker generator circuit that is produced by a company called engineering.com. And that's uh, engineering spelled with a capital N uh, at first instead of an E. And uh, it's a nice little circuit. I took a look at it online. And then I figured out, well, wait a minute. I can put something like that together with stuff that I have here in the, uh, in the basement here in my workshop. So I started digging around and I was able to put something together without any problem at all. And I want to share that with you today. That's the, uh, that's the subject of this video. We're going to put together a campfire uh, for the hobo camp that I have here on the layout. Because I do have a uh, Woodland Scenics uh, scene that is a hobo camp. It's got, you know, several hobos sitting around a campfire. So what I'm going to do today then is put together a campfire uh, for that particular scene and replace the static one that came with the Woodland Scenics kit. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box, and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it, and click all. So let's go ahead and get started with the project. Oh. Instead of building my own circuit for this project, I decided to use a uh, standard mobile decoder because over the years uh, I have removed a number of mobile decoders from locomotives and replaced them with sound decoders. So I do have a number of these laying around. Um, the thing that they, uh, many of them have is a lighting effects uh, uh, circuit or a lighting effects option for a firebox flicker. And that's used to create a firebox flicker in a steam locomotive cab, or if you have an open firebox, you could put it in there as well and create that effect. But, you know, as far as I was concerned, there's very little difference between a fire inside of a, of a steam locomotive firebox and a campfire. So it seemed like a perfect match, a way to do it. And this is a very straightforward, easy to use decoder. It was produced around 2002. So it's, you know, almost 20 years old, but it still works fine. And it does have the firebox flicker effect. And it's a very straightforward, easy thing to do. I just hooked it up to my uh, decoder tester and connected that to my, uh, to my programming track. And I was able to program it without any problem in just a few easy steps. I changed the address and then, you know, there, it was a simple one, um, one uh, CV change to create the firebox flicker on the headlight uh, uh, wire, the white wire. So that's the way that I went about it. Now, um, hopefully you have one laying around. Uh, another option, of course, is there are a number of function-only decoders available these days, and uh, you can pick those up. They're less expensive than a, a mobile decoder, say, and they typically would have a firebox flicker effect built in. Um, and you can probably find a lot of used uh, but still functioning decoders available on eBay and other uh, forums where you know model railroaders sell their excess equipment. So take a look at that kind of thing because that is an option. Now, what about the light? Because you know you don't want some huge LED uh, in here. So what I did, I just went ahead and used one of these small surface mount LEDs that I have been using for my headlights in a lot of projects here. So I think you can, if I hold that, if I get this out of the way, there you go, you can see that. So it's a very, very tiny little thing. So I, I simply took this little surface mount LED, and remember these come with a 1000 ohm uh, resistor already attached to the positive lead. So you just connect that to your, uh, to your blue wire and then connect the other lead to the white wire here on the uh, on the decoder, and that's for the front, and that and then that's the front headlight connection, and then in order to get the color I want because these are a very bright white LED, I went ahead and used uh, this Tamiya uh, clear orange paint. It's X twenty six is the uh, number, and this gives you a uh, it's not clear it's transparent. 
but it gives you a nice coating and it's acrylic and it dries fairly quickly. So all you have to do is just paint that uh, the entire LED and get it all in there and you could even dip it in the bottle and then just let that dry completely before you try lighting this sucker up because you don't want to uh, fire it up with something uh, that might short it out until it has dried. But once it dried, no problem. Now they do have the orange and there is a X27, which is their clear red uh, version as well. And I did use some of this and let me show you what I did. Now, in order to diffuse the fire effect through a campfire, I, uh, I, I decided to use some uh, plastic, it's sort of like cellophane. This came from a, a bread wrapper, actually. It was uh, inside an Arnold bread wrapper. And um, so it, it came out, it was originally clear. So I painted one with this orange paint and the other one with the red Tamiya paint. Now, this to me looks more dark orange, that's a light orange. So I decided I was gonna use this because it would give me a much more intense effect you know, on the, uh, in the campfire itself. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you the, uh, I'm gonna fire up the uh, decoder and we'll take a look at the fire effect and the flicker rate and you can get an idea of that before we move on. Okay, so here we have the uh, firebox flicker effect going on and this has been painted, as I said, with the Tamiya uh, clear orange paint. And uh, because of the bright lights here, you know, it doesn't look all that orange, but when these are turned off, uh, it, it is a very nice orange color, particularly when it's behind something like this. That's gonna give us a decent, you know, color effect there. Um, and this will, and the, the, the plastic will be used in the campfire itself. So let's go ahead. Next, I want to show you how I went about building the little campfire, and then we'll install it on the layout. Now, this was really put together with a lot of scrap, let me tell you. I started out with this, uh, with a piece of uh, plastic sprue left over from a, a, a building, and you can see it's got this nice dimple in it. It's, it's shaped like a, a basic mounted campfire. So I went ahead and drilled a hole using my Black and, my black and Decker drill. And um, I, I wanted something big enough that the LED was gonna at least fit up into, and it's gonna transmit a lot of light. So this is what I've got here. I've got this piece of plastic, so you could use a, a piece of plastic tubing as well, if you, you know, but you know, it was easy enough to, to make it out of this. So we've got this uh, piece of plastic, it's about a quarter of an inch in diameter, with a, uh, a hole down through the center that, uh, you know, it's gonna allow the light from that uh, campfire flicker generator to uh, shine up through. Then, as you can see, I've cut out some sections from my piece of uh, red, which looks orange to me, uh, plastic. And then I just went ahead and balled that up to form a small flame of sorts. And that I'm gonna go ahead and we'll just insert that, assuming I can hold it, right up into the opening, like this. And we'll set that back down here. Okay, so that right there is gonna give us our basic flame effect and the light going to be shining up through there as it flickers away. So let's go ahead, the next thing I wanna do is let's take some small pieces of gravel and we're gonna make a ring of rock around the bottom of this plastic fixture to serve you know, as our campfire enclosure. So I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing these together using some super glue. So let me go ahead and get my gel glue out and we'll start gluing. I'm gonna start with this one right here and we'll get a little super glue on him like that. And I'm gonna hold this down to get started. And we've got the first one placed. There. I'm gonna go ahead and take this flame out for the time being because it's kind of making it difficult to do the gluing. 
Okay, so we got one rock in place. Now, let me go ahead and we'll start adding more. Now, I will point out that um, the Woodland Scenics kit comes with a little cast resin or plastic. I'm not sure what it really is. Um, campfire enclosure. But as usual, I was messing around with that and it headed to the floor and took a little bit of a bounce. And I have no idea where it ended up because I searched high and low, swept the whole train room, and I still have not found that thing. I think I better start turning these guys. Um, okay, let's see here. Go ahead and glue this one on. So losing that piece prompted me to go ahead and build a... Uh, build my own campfire, which I think is going to look a lot better because that other one was just a, a casting that, you know, they had painted probably in China when it was made. And it didn't look too bad. I call it a three-footer. It looks fine as long as you're standing at least three feet away from it. Get this one in here. I'm a firm believer that real rock looks better anyway than cast resin. Let's see. How about a little piece right here? And if I can find, oh, I don't have any more small pieces, so uh, I'll break one in half. And we'll finish it off here. We could use one here on this side. Sorry if I got that off camera a second. I think I was going to put this one right in here. Okay. So I'm going to let those let that uh, super glue go ahead and sit up. And uh, what I've done, I'll show you here. Um, I went ahead and split up a pile of uh, firewood for the guys so that they would have something to put on the fire. So let's go ahead and, and um, I'm going to let this dry and then I'll come right back with it ready to go. I decided it would be a good idea to apply some super glue here to the underside of the campfire so that it's not going to uh, get bounced or uh, get uh, the gravel is not going to come off of it. There we go. That looks pretty good. So we'll let that set up and then I'll start adding the uh, wood to it. I went ahead and used a little bit of my uh, uh, Super glue accelerator, so this is uh, firm now, and it should be one solid uh, campfire. So what I want to do is take this, turn it, keep it over, and then I'm going to insert my flame, so to speak, uh, into the opening, and we'll get that in there. There we go. Okay, now, I think I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go ahead and settle that in place using a little bit of super glue gel as well. There. Okay. 
get that into its final position. And then I'm going to zap it with my accelerator. So I'm going to get the lid off with one hand here. Okay, that finishes that. So we now have a we now have the campfire area with its plastic flame there. So let's go ahead and I'm going to start building the campfire using our firewood pile here. Uh, let me get that. There we go. I put that right over the opening so that uh, it's not going to be damaged in the process. So what I'm going to do is I've got my super glue ready and I'll start uh, gluing on some of these pieces of firewood. Okay, I hope you've got a steady hand for doing this because it takes it. There, now I've got that in place. Let's go ahead and we'll drop him in here. Our first piece of wood. Get another one for the other side. I'm going to drop him in over here. And hopefully I've got him. Let me make sure I've got enough glue on. Yeah, I've got enough glue there. There. Okay, let's get another one. And I'm going to pile it this way now. Because we want to leave enough of an opening in there for the light to get out. And I'm going to do one on this side here. There. And another piece. I want to bring it up to where that flame is almost covered, but leave enough of an opening for the lights to get out. Okay. Okay, I think that's going to be enough. So I'm going to let that sit and dry and then we'll test it and see what it looks like with the um, fire flicker. Okay, so there is the, uh, the flicker going full blast. And uh, once this is sitting flat, um, you'll not get as much escape from the bottom. So, uh, but it does give you a nice yellow orange and a deeper orange combination. Let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to cut down the light a bit on this so it'll make it a little bit easier to see the flicker effect here, hopefully. Yeah, I think, that, uh, I think that's a little bit better. That gives you a better idea and um, what that's going to look like once it's on the layout. Um, We'll get that down there. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to move over to the layout and start preparing a place because I need to go ahead, I need to drill a hole through the bottom of the layout so I can run the little LED up to the, uh, to the campfire itself. So let me go do that. 
Here's a look underneath of the layout. You can see the wire here going up through the bottom to the uh, uh, to the scene above with the fire pit. And um, the two blue connectors on the wire bus are just standard T-bus connectors that I've shown you in the past. And then the wires from the decoder, and this is the decoder right here, um, the blue one with the black tape around it. And um, that's all it is. A, a bundle of wires are, are just hidden up under there, and then the red and the black wire from the decoder are going straight to the uh, DCC power bus, and that's all it is. Okay, so here we have the final scene with the uh, campfire lit up and flickering away. I'm trying to move the lights around a little bit so you can uh, get a better feeling for it. So we've got a nice uh, little flicker going on here. Uh, and it only took me, oh, maybe an hour to uh, put this whole thing uh, together. It would have been a lot faster if I hadn't been recording as I went along. So give this a try sometime on your model railroad. I think you'll like having a little bit of animation here and there scattered about. Well, that's a wrap for this video. And uh, I hope you have uh, a bunch of uh, old decoders laying around with the uh, Firebox Flicker uh, capability so you can put together a scene like this as well. Because, you know, you can use this not only for campfires, but you could use it for an arc welder scene on your layout somewhere. Uh, you could put it in an engine house or a, a factory building uh, so it looks like they're doing some welding there. Uh, you could put it in a sawdust burner and make a nice uh, fire uh, effect there. You could put it in a smokestack. I'm sure you can think of a number of different places that you could use this same type of uh, flicker type lighting animation. So go ahead and give it a try this weekend and, you know, come on back next week for another video from the DCC guy. Bye now.